Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Amber Enterprises India Limited Q1 FI23 Earnings Conference Call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star than zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Jasbir Singh, Chairman and CEO of Amber Enterprises India Limited. Thank you and over to you Mr. Singh. Hello and uh, good morning everyone. First and foremost, I hope you all are keeping safe and healthy. On the call, I'm joined by Mr. Diljeet Singh, Managing Director, Mr. Sudhir Goel, CFO, Mr. Sanjay Rora, CEO, Electronics Division, and Mr. Sachin Gupta, CEO, REC and CSC Division, and our SGA, our Investor Relation Advisors. We have uploaded our result presentation on the exchanges, and I hope everybody had an opportunity to go through the same. The first half of the year was very good for the air conditioner industry. Amid scorching heat this season without any lockdown restrictions, as per the industry reports, the January to June AC market domestic is close to about 6 million units as against pre-pandemic levels of 4.25 to 4.5 million units in H1 calendar year 19. The industry is expected to cross 8 million in this calendar year versus 6.4 million units in FY22 and 7.2 million units in FY20. This signifi signifies that the pent-up demand is coming back into the system despite the inflationary pressures. From 1st July 2022, new energy rating rules for air conditioners have been implemented. We expect smooth transition to new table providing more energy efficient products to the industry. I am pleased to share that our performance stands out even when compared to quarter one FY19 and quarter one FY20, which was the last comparable first quarter when business and economic activity were at normal levels. Even when we compare the full fiscal year 2020 with trailing 12 months ended on 30th June 2022, our revenue has increased from 3,963 crores in FY20 to Rs. 5,324 crores in trailing 12 months ended on 30th June 2022. On the operating profitability, we have clocked 377 crores in operating EBITDA in trailing 12 months ended on 30th June 2022 versus 326 in FY20. The quarter, however, continued to bring challenges related to inflation, rising interest rates, and foreign exchange fluctuations. The industry, however, witnessed some softening of raw material prices, but it still continues to be higher than the pre-pandemic levels. During the quarter, we were able to pass on the commodity price increase to our customers. That happens with the quarterly lag as a standard industry phenomenon. Despite challenges, we are enthusiastic about the prospects for FY23 due to strong order book and things has become normal post pandemic and softening of commodity prices. On the new greenfield facility, three city facilities will be operational in the second half of this fiscal year 2023. We expect to start our trial runs in mid of September this year and commercial production start by mid of December 2022. We have been able to improve our market share and client wallet share because of our commitment to being a one-stop solution provider, a comprehensive and integrated solution provider for our customers. Our market share in value terms at OEM manufacturing level has increased from 21.2% in FY18 the year when we got listed, to 26.6% in FY22. Now moving on to the divisional performance. In room AC division, RAC division has grown by 138% to 
in quarter 1 FY23 over quarter 1 FY22. Our volumes and revenues grew in tandem with the industry during the quarter. In the fiscal year 2022-23, the industry is anticipated to surpass 8 million units, indicating a robust demand from consumers. On the commercial side, we have added new products for commercial ductable ACs as well as cassette ACs, which we have started to offer to our existing customers now. In the motors division, motor division has grown by 131% in Q1 FY23 over Q1 FY22. We have increased our product offering to our customers by adding new models for both the domestic and international markets. BLDC is currently a very small part of portfolio we have recently started. Reliability cycle is going on and we are about to start the mass production. So we see that this BLDC would be adding as revenue from both sides in captive as well as also on the component solution to our customers. Having strong order book due to addition in new products, new customers and new geographies and expected to grow by more than about 30% in FY23. About the electronics division, which includes Ilgin and Ever, this division grew by 254% in quarter one FY23 over quarter one FY22. We have added new big customers through brownfield expansion in South India. As informed earlier, we have added both as our customer and have started supplies for new age applications like smart variables and hearables. This is a large business segment which is growing at a fast pace. Our supply to board opens up a large sectoral opportunity for Umber. We expect to see this segment grow at a faster pace in coming years. We are also expanding this division into a new vertical, new applications moving forward. On the components division, which includes AC and non-AC components, our components division grew by 218% in quarter one FY23 over quarter one FY22. Our components division has played a very positive role in our growth. We are adding new products, new customers, and new geographies in this segment. Umber PR and Pravartaka, which are the two new acquired entities, are witnessing increased traction on both of cross-selling to existing customers and it is expanding its manufacturing footprint now in the western region and southern region respectively. The mobility application division grew by 91% in quarter one FY23. We have onboarded new customers who are global leaders. We are now developing new products for multiple business categories. We've added products to cater to steel plants. We further serve, to further serve our existing customers, we are developing new products to increase our wallet share in the railways and metros. And our order books today stand healthy at more than 625 crores. To sum up, we believe that all our business engines are at sweet spot to grow multifold from here. RAC and components division is expected to grow faster than the industry growth rate in this financial year 23. Motors division is expected to grow more than 30% in current financial year 23. Electronics division is expected to grow more than 35% in FY23. Mobility application division is expected to grow more than 15% in FY23. And our new acquisitions, Umber PR and Pravartka are on a growth path to deliver more than 25% in this fiscal FY23. We also expect that our ROCE to improve significantly from current levels and is expected to be in the range of 17 to 20% in the next two to three years time. The expected improvement in ROCE is despite investments in the growth capex. I will now take you through the consolidated financial highlights on the revenue, quarter one FY23 revenue stood at rupees 1826 crores versus 708 crores in Q1 FY22. On the operating EBITDA side, quarter one FY23 operating EBITDA stood at rupees 131 crores versus rupees 50 crores in Q1 FY22. Operating EBITDA margins for quarter one FY23 and quarter one FY22 stood at 7.2% 
and 7% respectively. Quarter 1 FY23 and Quarter 1 FY22 operating EBITDA does not include ESOP expense of rupees 5.29 crores and rupees 3.26 crores respectively. On the pad, Quarter 1 FY23 pad stood at rupees 43 crores versus rupees 11 crores in Q1 FY22. All divisions are ready to take advantage of multiple opportunities. Our goal is to capture the bulk of the RSE and the component market share. We feel that this opportunity will boost our position in the domestic market while also providing solid foundations for exports moving forward. And on the networking capital days, uh, we have been able to reduce it from on a console level from 76 to 37 days uh, comparative in the comparative quarters. Uh, thank you very much. And now I open the desk for the Q&A session. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Participants are requested to ask two questions per participant. If time permit, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The first question is from the line of Aditya from Investec. Please go ahead. Um, hi, good morning, Jasbir. Um, good morning, Aditya. Is, hi. Um, my first question is on some of the one-off costs that we had in this quarter. Uh, could you provide the split between forex loss, uh, loss on sale of fixed assets, and uh, the write-off on the fixed asset side that we are having? Uh, and, and simultaneously, if you could also explain the nature of uh, uh, forex MTM loss. Sure, I think I'll ask Uti to answer this question. Yeah, hi Aditya, uh, good morning. Uh, so on the forex loss, we have a M2M loss of around 23 CR in the quarter one. And on the ESOP impact, what we have spoken is 5.29 CR. And on loss on sale of uh, fixed assets is around uh, 52 lakhs. And uh, sorry, this total is around uh, 79 lakhs. And also there is a M2M on the bonds, this was that got adjusted in the interest income, that is around 1.95 crores. Understood. Uh, and this MTM loss on Forex that we are having is mainly on uh, payables? On payables and uh, buyer's credit as well. And, buyer's credit. and this will get adjusted in the future quarters uh, in the form of uh, price increase, which will take on the quarterly lag basis from the customers. Understood. Understood. <laughs> Uh, uh, my second question is on Sidwal, wherein we uh, we have seen a very very strong growth uh, in revenues in quarter one. Um, what has that really been on account of, uh, and, and in terms of new custom additions, product additions that you can just uh, uh, spill out in a bit more detail on that front? So Aditya, as we explained in uh, last few quarters, that we had added uh, some marquee customers there, global players who won uh, new tenders from Indian government, from Ministry of Urban Development, and those trains now are uh, almost ready to be dispatched. In fact, uh, uh, the first train uh, which has come out uh, day before yesterday for trial run on the Delhi Mirat uh, new category of rapid rail transport system, uh, which has been supplied by uh, Bombardier, that has got Sidwal's air conditioners in it. And we've also won uh, uh, some recycling the of air conditioners businesses from Delhi Metro, which we have accomplished this quarter. And uh, our AMC business has also grown uh, significantly in this quarter. So uh, all this is adding up uh, to a robust uh, growth in that division. Understood. And lastly, sir, can you also share the volume numbers for this quarter? So this quarter we have uh, clocked a volume of 1.28 million uh, this year, I mean, uh, from April to June. Uh, and and would uh, only would it be possible to just provide the uh, proportion of window ACs within that? Uh, I would restrict that because that has become a very sensitive data. You know, we have seen in past uh, 
few of our uh, customers taking that data and uh, you know they attempted a negotiation bid so we started it that we have stopped uh, sharing that data you know but uh, yes we have we have grown in tandem uh, i think uh, we are expected uh, i am expecting that industry will uh, do a number of somewhere between 28 to 30% this year on the growth perspective and number this financial year uh, is expected to outnumber the industry by at least uh, 2 to 3% or maybe 4% depending on how the last quarter goes and uh, primarily this outnumbering will happen because uh, our gas charging customers are now uh, you know at last leg of starting manufacturing with us so sri city is also opening where we are starting our manufacturing footprint which will contribute very little uh, very very little this uh, fiscal year because it will be starting in mid of december uh, but because of the new customer addition we will be able to outnumber the industry in terms of volumes perfect that that's great to hear thanks thanks a lot sir thank you participants you may press star and one to ask a question the next question is from the line of dhananjay from ask investment managers please go ahead Uh, hi, sir. Congratulations on the excellent result. Uh, would it be fair to assume after taking out the exceptional, uh, then your Q on Q would be a positive vis-a-vis which is reported? Uh, Q on Q would be a growth of your OPM versus uh, what was reported as a negative. You are talking about the operating margins. Yes. Yeah, it has been uh, positive uh, uh, as, as compared to Q on Q basis. Okay, sure. So after adjusting for it. these uh, a few of the listed peers uh, have also mentioned that they are now uh, setting up capacity for odm solutions for other players going ahead uh, and they were themselves were initially uh, consumers of uh, other people so now do you see that having an impact on us also well i i mean uh, uh, we don't see any competitive landscape getting changed because of uh, these uh, initiatives by uh, other other companies i believe that uh, you know uh, ac industry is uh, heading towards a robust growth for coming decade and uh, there is certainly a room for uh, you know one or two more new players but uh, the uh, will they be able to offer uh, the solutions in all the 23 geographies like amber does will they be able to offer uh, the solutions in the component space also and that too also in seven verticals in which amber operates uh, that is yet to be seen uh, but um, you know as far as um, the stickiness with the clients is concerned i think amber is offering a very uh, very very comprehensive and integrated solutions in different geographies of india so but yes i mean we we welcome worthy rivals so it's it's always good to have uh, competitiveness in the market which keeps you on toes sure and uh, lastly sir in terms of the pli you mentioned that q1 would have been the first quarter where we have started seeing some uh, pli benefits and now we'll see that for the rest of the year would, would you be able to quantify that uh you see the, we will not be able to quantify until the pma agency uh, certifies the pli benefit so so that will happen on the yearly sales so we have already crossed our threshold of investment last year we are eligible for the incremental sale benefit this financial year but we will apply for the benefit after closing of the financial year and uh, i expect that they will another take uh, another quarter or so uh, you know to uh, give us the certificate or, or uh, you know uh, stamp whatever the incentive becomes so right now it's very difficult to assess that kind of a situation okay uh, yeah. okay fine sure i'll come back in a more thank you thank you the next question is from the line of renu bain from ifl securities please go ahead yeah hi uh, good morning sir um, i have three questions uh, first if you can help us give some um, color on how has been the operating performance of uh, the various subsidies uh, whether it's uh, the wal mobility or uh, sorry but there's a bit of disturbance coming can i request you talk a little louder yeah uh, am i audible now yes thank you uh, renu you are yeah. audible Yeah. Hi. Um, so my first question was, uh, if you can help us provide some insights into the operating performance of the various subsidies that we have, uh, and how have uh, they uh, moved in terms of our targeted uh, uh, margins of uh, double-digit levels? 
Sure, uh, Renu. Uh, to so starting with the motors division, uh, we have uh, done 83.44 crores revenue uh, as compared to 35.89 uh, on Q1. On Q1. And this 83.44 revenue uh, brings uh, operating EBITDA of 10.24. And then when we go to uh, mobility applications, that has jumped from 49 crores to 94 crores. And with the, um, at 94, uh, the EBITDA stands at 25.77 crores. Uh, in the electronics division, we have jumped from 58 crores to 208 crores. This combines Ilgin and Ever together. And uh, the operating EBITDA from minus 160 has come to 8.85 crores. And uh, Umber PR and Umber Parvartka. So Umber PR, uh, we are moving, we have done 33 crores because there is no comparison with the last year quarter. We just acquired these entities. At Can 33, I... they have done uh, 3.88 crores, which is about 12% EBITDA. And Parvartka has done 41 crores at uh, 4.22 crores EBITDA. So all of the subsidiaries, if you see, have now uh, almost touching or touched and crossed the double-digit uh, EBITDA numbers, and uh, except the electronic division, which actually by nature the business is such. Um, so we are on a growth path in all the six uh, subsidiaries of uh, Umber, and I expect that um, they continue to grow like that um, in coming quarters. Sure. Uh, my second question was actually related to the electronic subsidies ever in Elgin. Uh, if you see there are a lot of activities happening in this space on the uh, PCBA segment across various applications, not just for consumer products. And if we see some of the listed unli uh, other unlisted peers which we have, including the ones uh, which are looking to come uh, to the market for IPO, uh, their EBITDA margins seem to be in double-digit levels for PCBAs. Uh, so how should we compare or how should we benchmark um, our operating performance or margins of Ever Elgin with some of the other peers which will get listed um, in the coming months? And where do you see the gaps in terms of uh, margin improvement? You see, on one side, we have uh, companies like Dixon to benchmark. On the other side, we have uh, Sirma, which you are talking about right now, which is just about to launch. So yeah. both the applications uh, are very different. You know, we are... Uh, catering to applications of consumer durables and variable and variables, which are generally a low EBITDA margin businesses. So Dixon and Ilgin and Ever will be almost in the same range. Uh, right, so and, Dixon uh, has a different know, business model in terms of assembly. Hmm. If you go for uh, automobile sector or you go for defense or other sectors, then their EBITDA margins are certainly uh, very different. Not even Sirma, I would talk about other companies which we know about, which are unlisted right now, which have... Uh, uh, which are aspiring to be listed very soon, uh, right. those operate in range of 12 to 14 percent. So what we are doing at Ilgin and Ever is that, uh, first of all, we when we took over these companies, it was primarily a refrigerator and uh, air conditioning uh, uh, solution provider. And only and primarily to LG, correct. Primarily to LG and IFB. There were only two customers. Correct. Now we have 18 customers in that division. And uh, we are also uh, coming up with a third factory in South India, which is, which will be operational in next two to three months. That is on the rented premises. That is under uh, installation right now. So uh, we, what we are doing is, apart, uh, apart from expanding our customers in the consumer durable business, so we have started giving solutions from not only refrigerator and air conditioners, but we have gone to washing machines, microwave ovens, fans, uh, water purifiers, and uh, um, and TVs, and now we have added another application which is variable and variable, and now we are adding uh, telecommunication equipments also. So, which right now we have just onboarded a customer. Uh, we cannot name them. We will be able to let you know once the commercial production starts with them. But that is again going to become a big business and also better margins from what we are today. So it is it is a mix and match of various applications which will increase the margins going forward in these subsidiaries. So probably from a two to three year perspective, you think the, uh, the electronics business can uh, target a near double digit margin for us given the mix that we have, nine ten percent or probably that looks elevated. You see, if we are successful in getting the applications where bid the margin is generally higher, of course it can hit uh, that number. But uh, if you want me to guide the numbers, I'll not be able to guide it. 
Then you are not looking for specific guidance. Uh, second, if we look at the core RAC market, as in uh, the offtake seems to be reasonably fine, but pricing pressures in the industry continue. Uh, so, what would be your outlook in terms of uh, the pass through of the cost escalations that we have seen? Um, is that transmission happening as expected? And resulting, uh, should we expect the margin for uh, the core RAC portfolio to improve, uh, given that these cost pass throughs will be there? And simultaneously, any comments on channel inventory would be an add-on. Thank you. It's now, room AC sector has entered into uh, uh, you know uh, off-season uh, quarters. So this Q2 and Q3 are off-season for the quarters. And uh, you know, and second headwind, uh, of, of, apart from the inflationary pressure, the second uh, headwind was uh, the B table change in the middle of uh, uh, you know the year, which is first of mm. July. Normally, it used to happen in 1st of January. Now, what used to happen was that dealers used to pick up inventories in anticipation of forthcoming season that they can right. sell it in a month or two. But now, since we have, it is, the cycle has reversed this time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there's a bit of lag in the industry right now as far as the July month is concerned. But August seems to be quite normal. I don't think so. Uh, anybody is carrying a lot of inventory now. It, it is a completely at a normal level right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Industry was very conservative while planning, and uh, industry was surprised by the pent up demand which came up. I think mm -hmm. the CAGR of double digit growth uh, will be continued from uh, today, uh, you know this year onwards. Uh, and uh, uh, on the price pressures, uh, yes, some some of the brands are still facing up price pressures. Uh, some of the brands have been able to pass on, so it's a mix and match from there on. But as far as our contracts goes, you know, it is um, uh, uh, basically supported by the price variation clause applicability, which we go now. What happened last year, last quarter was there was a last to last quarter there was a price increase. And last year, last quarter also, again, there was an increase. But then in June and by middle of June, we all saw that commodities started easing off. But it did not ease off to the pre-COVID levels. So probably if, if the commodities continue to be where it is today, I think there should be slight margin improvement going forward uh, in, in quarter three, quarter four onwards. Sure, but no pressures on you to reduce the prices and pass it on to brands at this point in time. You see, it's it's a right. I I think it's a right of every purchaser to ask for price increase reductions from us. But you know, <laughs> it depends on it depends totally on whether uh, we are in a position to do it or not. But uh, you know, we as as a company, there's a uh, very fundamental policies laid down on that front, and we don't want uh, to come bring the growth uh, based on the margin depletion kind of a thing. So. We are wary of that, of course. I mean, and uh, in some of the companies, uh, some of the customers, there is zero follow-up. Also, you know, it is automatically a understood phenomena, and uh, they are all uh, more than 70-year-old companies. So it's a, it's a autumn. They have seen so many cycles of inflationary um, uh, pressures in in past also. So it's a complete. Uh, I would say uh, the the commodities or currency exchanges are passed on uh, without any follow-up with them. So that's that's how the industry works. So I think as far as we are concerned, we are not facing any any pressures right now from the industry. Got it. Um, thanks much, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from Lano Sonali from Jeffries India. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is again an extension of the question on the demand. Now, I think the industry has taken cumulatively about 10 to 15% price hikes in the past 12 months. So is it fair to assume that there is some deceleration in the demand, especially for higher price point items such as the air conditioner? And also, uh, with the new BEE norm being effective from 1st of July, what is the quantum of price hikes that you think that the industry will take going forward? Uh, Sunali, if you see, industry has already demonstrated, uh, or uh, I would say, witnessed uh, more than 20% growth. Um, you know, despite of all the price increases which has uh, taken place. So that means that uh, this product is actually linked with a lifestyle uh, product rather than uh, you know uh, some somewhere where it is a price points. 
there are i mean i'll be you'll be surprised to know that there are shortages right now for some of the premium products uh, in the market if you want a five star inverter today of some of the brands it is it is available at uh, 10 days kind of a notice not off the shelf you know uh, some of the vrv units are available at uh, more than a month's basis right now you know so uh, but having said that i mean some of the brands are still keeping inventories uh, but from my opinion is that uh, industry is operating at a very normal inventory level there is nothing no point to worry about that and uh, price, markets and retail has already digested the price increase which has come uh, so there has we have seen impacts uh, on the price increase in earlier quarters when you know there was a lot of resistance from retail side to accept that and that's a natural phenomena whenever such kind of a price increase happens uh, which is unprecedented uh, you know retail definitely gives a back pressure but that that got over after the summers you know in during the summers um, everything passed out and uh, brands were able to uh, you know liquidate their inventories and on the be table uh, you know july month was little bit a lag month because uh, there was a slow down because everybody some of the brands they had already shifted to new be table from 1st of january some of the brands shifted right now so they saw a little bit lag but i think from august mid of august onwards uh, we are seeing uh, the order book again coming back to normal so uh, i would my estimate rough estimate is that industry should cross 8 million plus and uh, somewhere we should be landing in in the range of 8.2 to 8.4 million this this financial year and of course a lot market. depends on the quarter four uh, i mean of course if, if the winters get extended this number may change but as of now uh, the run rate th- i think that this number should is achievable understand sir so what is the incremental quantum of price hikes that you foresee the industry to take post the new implementation of be so in be uh, uh, you know there is an impact from somewhere about 800 rupees to 1200 uh, in the range of that you know per model so you know one ton model will will attract about 800 750 to 800 and uh, five star uh, two ton will be having about 1250 odd rupees change so that is the range of the increment it's it's not a very big uh, number uh, on a on a 35 or 40000 product uh, category understand so and my second regarding your mix now components has been a fast growing segment for you all so say about 3 to 5 years from now on what is the perceived mix between rcs and components in your overall sales well we are endeavoring that uh, this uh, split should come to 50 50 level i think uh, uh, we are touching those numbers in some of the quarters Uh, uh that should be that is our endeavor to bring uh, components and other businesses to a complete 50% level and uh, rac at a 50% level now what uh, further we are attempting is that rac and rac business i mean rac as a finished good plus rac components to bring that vertical at a 50% level so which is right now at about 72% so you know that is our endeavor moving forward uh, mo- for next 4 years uh, time so other businesses are catching up you will see lot of momentum in those businesses and uh, we are gearing up accordingly sure sir so and last question from my side uh, the capex guidance please on the capex uh, we still w- would be maintaining the same uh, guidance what we gave last time so 400 crore is what we are investing this financial year out of which uh, some part is going into greenfield facility uh, at city city which will be getting over right now and we are under discussion right now uh, for a, a, a two major expansion with customers if that goes uh, through then we will be investing somewhere about 150 crore more um, in this quarter but that is subject to the approvals which we will come to know by end of august or maybe mid of september uh and that that's it from uh, on the capex side next year uh, there is no requirement on the new greenfield facilities it will be just a normal ex- uh, r&d capex and maintenance capex and few subsidies are expanding next year so next year we expect it to be in the range of 150 to 175 crores thank you uh sorry to refuse solani i'll request to come back in the question queue for a follow up question I request to all the participants please restrict to two questions per participant 
If time permit, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The next question is from the line of Bhumika Nair from Dam Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir. Um, so, uh, you know, just wanted to touch upon the margin aspect. If you see a lot of the brands are actually putting up uh, their own, um, um, you know, facilities in the south. Uh, from that perspective and given our own plant will come in, do you think there will be, uh, you know, margin pressure as we move ahead, given that uh, fixed costs for the industries will for the industry will actually increase? And to that extent, what kind of an impact it can have on our ability to take price hikes? Good morning, Bhumika. Uh, in fact, you know, uh, if you see the manufacturing footprint right now in our sector, there are about 16 manufacturing companies, out of which 11 are brands. And uh, those brands are having factories, uh, not from now on, but they're having factories since last couple of decades. And we are supplying components to them. So uh, nothing on the competitive landscape is changing for us when the brands are investing in their expansion in the factories in the South India. You know, in fact, that becomes an opportunity for us uh, to supply them the components which they are not putting up. Uh, just to give an example, uh, you know, uh, like when, when, uh, whenever a branch put up a factory, they generally put up assembly lines and uh, labs plus heat exchanger lines. And some of them, they add injection molding and sheet metal. Uh, none of them is putting up, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, motor plants. None of them are coming up with the uh, inverter PCB boards. And uh, some of them are not putting up sheet metal facilities, some are not putting up top flow fans. So there is a lot of opportunity for companies like us uh, to, to give them. In fact, uh, they, are, they are very supportive right now. They are very happy that we are starting our 3CT plant ahead uh, of them. You know, so we will be able to give some uh, commit, uh, you know, components to them as we are giving right now. Uh, coming on the margin side of it, you see we are a B2B company and B2B company is an extension of manufacturing arm of our customers. So now, whenever that happens, you know, uh, there, there, it, is, it, is, it is actually run by a guided principles and uh, in case a brand is manufacturing on their own, any kind of commodity increase or currency impact comes on them also. So, in fact, with these kind of customers who have manufacturing uh, plants on their own, you know, they are very practical in uh, approach. Uh, they also know that this is a standard uh, part. You, we cannot reduce uh, or give the commodity increase portion to them uh, in case it comes to us. It has to be passed on and they have further to pass on to uh, clients in the markets. So, in a B2B organization, in, uh, it, it, uh, you know, it's a standard part that you have to continue touching base with the customer in case the commodities prices are going uh, in the north direction and in case it is going to the south direction they have to continue to, to talking to us <laughs> so so that's the cycle that goes on so uh, i think uh, on a we have we have seen our two decades journey till now a uh, lot of competitive landscape has changed and uh, we have been able to pass on commodity increases on a quarterly lag basis uh, every time I don't think so that fundamentally there's there's going to be a change there, uh, you know. Okay, sure, sure. So that's helpful. So the other thing, uh, the second question is on exports. Uh, we were looking at exports and we had started seeing some traction in the Middle East. If you can just talk a little more on, you know, what is the status of the same? Uh, where are we? Are we started getting orders and how do we see that scale up over the next couple few years? Yeah, in Middle East, uh, we are actually... Uh, uh, started uh, penetrating in a small numbers. We had already supplied some units uh, last year. And this year also we expect to do about 3 lakh uh, units this, this year, uh, I mean coming quarter and so. Um, and uh, we are also attempting to penetrate now in the US markets. Our products are ready. And uh, we expect uh, that our uh, energy labeling part will get over in FY23. And by maybe FY24, we should be able to clock some small revenues from finished goods uh, side. As far as motors is concerned, that is going very well. We have already started getting repeat orders from US markets and Middle Eastern markets. And uh, now we have added BLDC product, which was not available with us. So that will also go. In fact, we are also attempting to export cross row fans from air uh, through our new acquired entity as a solution provider in the motor and the fans uh, side. 
So uh, again, I would like to reiterate that uh, you know exports is a long-term strategy; it's not a short-term strategy. So uh, the you know significant impact on expo of exports should be visible in the balance sheet um, maybe three to four years from now. Sure, sir. So lastly, if I may just squeeze in the gross debt and the net debt numbers as at quarter end. I'm uh, sorry to answer that question, Sudhi. So, uh, on a net debt position, so on at a console basis, we have around 625 crores of a uh, net debt, and gross debt is around uh, <coughs> just a sec. Gross debt is around 1300 crores. Got it, sir. Thank you so much, and wish you all the very best. Thank you. Next question is from Brian of Nikunj Gala from Sundaram Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I have uh, just a need understanding on the uh, forex loss which you mentioned in this quarter. Uh, so here, just want to understand as a business policy, uh, we don't hedge, right? Our uh, the forex exposure. No, uh, we hedge the position uh, at around 25 to 30 percent on a short-term basis. And okay. Whenever there is a like large impact, we see and we discuss with the various people, and we increase it to 50 percent level as well, depending okay. on the scenario. Okay. So whatever unhedged position we have taken, the loss of 23 crores, right? M2. No, no, it's M to M. It is not a realized number. It is okay. M to M because we need to like uh, reinstate the all the liabilities at a closing rate. Okay, sure. And I think in one of the comment you mentioned, uh, you will recover this from the client. Is that understanding correct? Like in the coming quarters, if that uh, sacrifice then? Yeah, it happens that uh, in the next uh, quarter's costing, huh? we have an entity lying up with, uh, with us and that gets uh, valued at a uh, last year, last quarter's average commodity prices as well as the foreign currency rate. So that gets adjusted in the uh, coming quarter's selling price. Okay, sure. Uh, so, and just uh, uh, one point on this: say if you, if I look at the FI19 numbers, so do, in FI19 was the year where the you know the currency depreciation was also sharp. Uh, for the year, it was eight percent, and in in between, in one of the quarter, it was nine percent. So, how was that accounted during that time? So during that time also, we were able to recover that uh, depreciation uh, in the future uh, quarter sales. And uh, M to M loss is also always uh, covered under the foreign currency fluctuation in the other expenses. Okay, so similar. Okay, similar kind of uh, uh, accounting was done in other expense during that time also. Yeah, there, there is no change in the any accounting policy since uh, so many years. Uh, okay, okay, sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Next question is from the line of Kulgat Patni from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Uh, so thank you for taking my question. And, and so just one suggestion, uh, what previous uh, participant asked, I think it's uh, from a disclosure perspective, if you can just spread out the forex every quarter, it helps us look at margins more objectively. Uh, so my, my, my question is, firstly, in the previous quarter, you mentioned there were certain fixed costs under recovery because of certain uh, new uh, facilities started which were not contributing. Given that we still have you know, the Sri City facility coming in the second half of this year, uh, it, in the current quarter also, do we have some some uh, fixed costs which have not been fully recovered? I'm just trying to understand the sustainable margin for the business. Uh, yes, uh, they still, uh, those uh, newly started entities are not at a full capacity level. Uh, they did the business in quarter one. So we need to wait uh, for those entity, those plants which have started in the last, uh, last year, last quarter. Uh, they will be operational in a full capacity in the current uh, current year. But yes, there will be a, again new entity which is coming up in the H2, which is Shiri City. There will be a small impact on the fixed cost in the first year, but uh, from 23-24, you will see that full year uh, business and no uh, lag, lag of the fixed cost will be there going forward. Understood. Sir. You will see some of the fixed costs uh, are more because of the new uh, plants we have started it. Got it, sir. Sir, also on Sidwal, our order book is one of the highest, if not the highest in my recent memory. Uh, uh, can you just for modeling purpose help us understand what will be the time period in which we can uh, exhaust this 625 crore kind of an order book? Is it four quarters, five quarters? So generally, uh, uh, metro and train orders are uh, extended towards uh, close to about 18 to 20 months period. 
and uh, we expect sidwal to deliver um, 15 to 20 percent range a growth this year looking at the current run rate what what's there uh, but order book is a uh, strengthening i think uh, uh, the portfolio is getting uh, extended because we are not only adding uh, uh, you know air conditioners but we have started delivering more products we have increased our wallet share also within the same customers be it railway or metro or uh, uh, other applications which we are delivering uh, some defense orders have also come in so it's uh, moving very positive uh, uh, from that perspective no got it sir thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of madhav from, from fidelity international please go ahead hi uh, hi good morning thank you so much for your time uh, i just want to ask a couple of questions but the first one was basically uh, we mentioned about having this 150 crore capex uh, for two customers in terms of like an expansion could you help us understand a bit more of the nature of the expansion like are we putting up a capacity near their facility uh, or what's happening there uh, just want to understand that Uh, yeah madhav good morning uh, so so we are right now under discussion uh, for a brownfield expansion uh, near to the customers and uh, these are going to be customers of component sector and um, that is what is under discussion so i think by next quarter or so we'll be able to freeze um, right now it is moving positive with them in case it happens it will help us in uh, good sales of in next financial years Uh, these are RAC customers. Uh, these are consumer durable customers, both RAC and uh, other uh, consumer durables. And my second question was that uh, you mentioned about uh, three lakh units of exports that can happen. Uh, was that for uh, finished good RAC or was that for some motor, motor or other component? No, no. So uh, motors, we are doing uh, slightly more uh, motors. I think. Uh, the number is uh, moving positive 3 lakh is something which we did last year in motors this year uh, we are expected to do half a million or more uh, motors in case of uh, rac 3 lakhs are not uh, sets i have spoken i have spoken about units so we are attempting to do that numbers let's see uh, you know how it goes but uh, sir even 3 lakh units on a rac side i said the uh, it's a good number right like On our base of let's say 2.6 million units that we did in FY22, if we can do 0.3 million extra just from exports, that's a good bump up for us, isn't it? Or am I missing something? Yeah, so we are we are attempting it right now. Uh, we, we are talking with the customer. There are uh, positive uh, notes going on, but uh, this it can spill over to next financial year also. You know, depending on uh, the energy rating process, because that's a quite a long process. but that order book uh, is getting uh, uh, frozen uh, maybe maybe uh, very soon uh, we'll be able to freeze that order book but we'll see so, you know there are there are uh, certain milestones when a customer freezes the mile, uh, uh, order book first of all uh, the prototyping has to happen and then the b norm has to uh, apply now if uh, that goes fine then that supplies will happen now will that 3 lakh number come this year that's very difficult to state so which is completely okay as long as the business is trending in that direction that we can get that uh, uh, order but this is the middle east is it the point 3 lakh units that we talking about this fiscal or next fiscal no 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 so it's it's a middle east and uh, south africa region and uh, us all all put together understood understood no that really helps us okay perfect thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of nitin from ambit capital please go ahead hi uh, good morning jasveer morning nitin how are you good good ask you know one question that you say that this year you most likely do close to about as the industry will do about 8.2 million pieces so let's say in you know, fy 23 to 25 india gets closer to something like 10 million pieces and uh, for room air conditioners so you know what kind of a market share that you are targeting uh, let's say revenue market share you are targeting from 10 million uh, rac market in india uh, do you have enough capacities for that after present year capex so just trying to connect the massive revenue potential from uh, the capacities that you have 
and the market share that you are doing, thinking from the 10 million AC opportunity. So Nitin, if you uh, see today on the value term perspective, what we are offering, um, you know, to the industry, we have about 26.6% market share on the value terms. Yes. Which yes. is right. So uh, that is uh, based on the number um, of, of about 7 million. Now, when it inches towards the 10 million mark, I think uh, we should be able to expand our market share by at least uh, 200 bips or maybe more because we are expanding into components more now on the value terms and we do not would not need any kind of a capex for 10 million mark uh, at least on the assembly part of room air conditioners we may need little slight uh, capex for the uh, component side and now that that will depend on how we move ahead uh, whether heat exchangers are required or inverter pcb boards are required but on a value term basis, I think we should be able to maintain or grow our market share if it inches towards the 10 million mark. So basically you're looking at something like a 29% market share on 10 million pieces. And industry should be roughly at what, 23,000 uh, rupees per set at that time, do you think? Or 24,000 rupees? Is that the right way to look at it? No, no, no. In the, in the bill of material side, I think uh, it, it should be little less. Uh, if you talk, talk today on the bill of material side, it is roughly at around uh, 19,000. Okay. And, and do you think price inflation will happen on this 19,000 by about 5% because of all the effects of BEE, uh, pre amortization etc.? Or do you think it roughly stays here at 19 to 19,500 BOM? Very difficult to predict because uh, now I don't think so that for next three years, BE will be changing the table. So from B impact, uh, I don't think so it will come. Uh, but inflationary point is very difficult to predict. But we can definitely take uh, 3 to 5% range for inflation uh, every year. Last second question was about the Japanese. See, a lot of Japanese are putting up captive manufacturing capacities. And they're also thinking of India as a export base. They have global technology uh, parentage and backing also, let's say whether it's Hitachi or Daikin. So help us understand that, you know, how, what is your competitiveness, strength or weakness versus these Japanese and how you can work with Japanese either as a strategic player at some point in time or you don't need that. So if you see Nitin, uh, we are working with uh, most of the Japanese clients. We have uh, Panasonic, we have Daikin. We have Itachi, we have uh, Mitsubishi, Toshiba, Fiducio General. So we are working with uh, most of uh, them. And uh, they do take a lot of time to onboard a B2B uh, solution provider like us. Yes. Uh, we have been able uh, to, you know, penetrate and uh, give them solutions. And now we are increasing our wallet shares as we move ahead. And yes, you are right. The, some of the Japanese companies, I cannot name them, but they are thinking to shift geographies of exports uh, from India. And uh, you know that uh, 3 lakh number actually which I said uh, is going to happen, uh, part of that will happen through them also. Uh, so it, it depends on how we are, I mean they are likely to shift uh, some, and even, even our government of India is wanting now since the dedicated export council is getting set up uh, uh, at the various positions in government, you know, there is going to be a very, very focused approach uh, from government also to convince multinational companies to shift their geographies. In fact, that is the lowest hanging fruit in our sector now. And if we are able to convince some of the multinationals, especially Japanese and Koreans, to shift their uh, even small numbers, it will, it will actually help uh, expand the manufacturing footprint in India, where company like us is well positioned to take advantage of that. Okay, so you're saying that when you give that indication of exports, roughly you could be working through the Japanese company, uh, helping them with components or assembling on their behalf so that they export their brand from India, is it? Well, I don't want to state the nationality of the customer, but uh, yes, they are multinational companies which we are working. It may be a direct export also. So, the agenda is to export whether, whether direct or indirect doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, get, get, get the point. Thank you. I think this is enough for me. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Hitesh from ICICI Direct. Please go ahead. 
thank you for the opportunity sir sir uh, i have two question one is uh, uh, on the import uh, front uh, the government has put up a ban on uh, import of a full uh, gas filled ac so uh, have you seen any reduction on the imports of the uh, uh, ac sir uh, in the in the last two years earlier i think it was around 3000 to 4000 crore of uh, import so roughly about uh, 2 million units were getting imported in uh, 19 fy19 and then september 20 was when the gas ban was impacted after that we have seen 88% reduction in the finished goods category and uh, there are some few customers who are importing air conditioners minus gas so nobody is able to uh, bring the full finished good now that has 100% been banned uh, there are few customers who are getting uh, the kits and uh, we are likely to start getting get shift those customers into manufacturing units uh, in india uh, i think by next year uh, there should be 95% reduction in the imports uh, if right now it is about 80% reduction okay and sir my uh, second question is on the uh, pli front uh you said like uh, uh, you're going to uh, uh, hit the threshold of the pli uh, revenue so uh, we have a pli uh, in the different category different product category so sir could you uh, please quantify what kind of threshold level uh, is required uh, to get the benefit for us see there is a, we are eligible for 400 crore uh, 300 crore in number and 100 crore in elgin which is our electronic subsidiary and this capex has to happen in 5 years uh, where the first year was the last year so what the threshold of the capex has already been done so that is a tick mark now we have to bring in five times the uh, capex done last year incremental sale this year so that is also being done uh, so we don't uh, you know see any hurdles achieving those numbers and after that we will get 6% on the incremental sales as a first year incentive so which will be the quantification of that will become uh, evident by about uh, it will be how much approaching crore it will be approximately 15 crores for the first year okay okay thank you and that's all from my side sir thank you very much thank you next question is from the line of gopal from sbi please go ahead Uh, yeah hi sir uh, thanks a lot uh, for the opportunity uh, so my question was on uh, you know uh, there has been a lot of competition at the brand level uh, and many of these companies are uh, in the uh, this good season have reported negative margins uh, do you expect uh, consolidation of uh, uh, brands uh, uh, in the uh, in this uh, competitive environment well very difficult uh, question to answer because you know we are a b2b uh, player we are not in the marketplace uh, there are um, uh, many brands listed on the be website if you see those are people who are selling air conditioners uh, more than 50 of them uh, yes but yeah. uh, the market is already uh, consolidated 80% of that goes through uh, 10 or 12 players you know so 75 to 80% is catered by them uh maybe moving forward once the industry touches about 2 crore 3 crore air conditioner we should see some kind of a consolidation but right now it is a too early a stage for consolidation the region was uh, you know basically we are also uh, supplying to lot of these uh, uh, fringe brands so will that have any impact on our volumes or, or have we seen any impact uh, on those brands uh, in our volume share See, we have seen market shares getting exchanged between brands in last two decades. Okay. And uh, we are a solution provider to the industry. I mean, if someone uh, merges one company with another one, or someone buys someone out, uh, they changes their market shares. But since we are supplying to most of uh, the brands, I think we should not be uh, affected at, at at that point of time. In past, also when we have seen. uh you know today voltas is the leader uh, last 10 years back somebody else was the leader but we were right. uh, you know when when the market shares dropped of that brand we were we continued to grow because we were giving solutions to voltas also and to others also who were having the market shares increase yeah. sure sir the second question uh, is you know on the gross margin for standalone business 
is there any one off on the cross margin or uh, uh, there is no one off in the cross margin there is no one off there is no one off in the cross box so so basically in the last quarter call uh, we know we suggested that you know that this pass through of cost uh, will majority of that will happen in the next quarter uh, which was like in the current quarter and uh, so we used to you know uh, do a gross margin of 14 15% and it is still hovering around uh, 10 and a half 11% uh, so and again we are going for next two week quarter so how we are going to recoup this uh, loss on the gross margin uh so uh, the uh, increase in the commodity prices which happened in the quarter uh fourth of the previous financial year uh that was that was not the eased out in the quarter one rather there was a further increase in the uh, month of april and may so that is why there is no uh, decrease in the ebit uh, gross margins and if you see that let's assume there is a 85 rupees of a rmc on a 100 rupees uh, selling price and if 10 rupees is increased in the raw material prices to 95 and we increase the selling price by uh, 10 rupees 110 so 15 or 110 uh, in percentage term it always looks uh, depressed and in a uh, reverse cycle whenever there is a ease out of the commodity prices you see a percentage margin increase in the uh, gross margins so since commodity prices are not eased out rather they were stable at that point of time uh, in the month of uh, uh, april but rather further increased it so that is why there is no uh, uh, ease out in the percentage terms of gross margin okay so so when it decline and so it should reverse basically uh, once it declines to the previous levels then it will uh, you will see a better uh, gross margin uh, percentage terms okay that's so sure the last uh, bit on the you know esop charge uh, so if you can just uh, give some color on uh, uh, why we are you know differentiating it uh, as a separate line item uh, not uh, you know part of uh, ebitda see we are differentiating it since it's a non cash item for us uh, as uh, it is not impacting our uh, cash flow that is why okay. we are showing it as a separate line item and did this like 15 uh, to 20 crore range this will continue every year no it will uh, steadily uh, going down if we don't come up with a new esop scheme because okay. first year it is always a higher impact on the pnl and uh, in the next 2 3 years it gets uh, declined okay sure sir thanks a lot yeah thank you uh, thank you very much ladies and gentlemen due to time constraint that will be the last question for today and now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments thank you everyone for joining on the call i hope uh, we have been able to address all your queries for any further information kindly get in touch with manish uh, or strategy growth advisors or investor relations advisors thank you and have a good day ahead thank you very much on behalf of amba enterprises limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines thank you